Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to our stream. Hey, beautiful viewers. <laughs> yep, that's uh, taking place on uh, like <laughs> right here, right now, um, in form of a video recording. And uh, I'm joined here today by beautiful Kathy Catherine, um, hey. who is this person who has uh, a lot of experience under her belt. I um, I feel slightly like <laughs> embarrassed, you know, because like she has 3,500 classes under her belt. That's only skying. And then I'm scared like to ask you what you have on top of that. Probably many more. <laughs> right. So How long have you been teaching? Oh, actually, I'd like to say that who should be embarrassed? It should be me because today, like, my perfect interlocutor is Marnie, who is a brain scientist there is a oh, lifestyle yeah. streamer brains here hmm? sorry we study brains here yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's uh you don't yeah, forget that thing. one is a multi-linguist uh also she teaches teachers and students and what's same as you do <laughs> yeah but anyway what's more interesting right. that learning popularizes science because science is cool yeah so that's why science is cool awesome. i love science yeah, science also sometimes demands you to be up for 17 hours or something in one day, but that's okay. Right, you teach teachers do, don't you? Kind of, kind of, trying, yeah. So how are you today, by the way? Mm, doing good. How are you doing? <laughs> Well, uh, we at, at some point we kind of work together, if you can say that, right? Even though we didn't see much of each other in TDC. Yeah, 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 sure, sure, exactly. Right, right. So uh, without knowing, yeah, we saw each other. <laughs> uh, well, what we're talking about today, right? You were like, what we're yeah. talking about? We're talking about uh, natives in the classroom, uh, whatever language you're learning, um, is it? profitable and uh, is that a good idea to be learning it from a native speaker um well i've learned languages from <laughs> native speakers and i actually did not even have the experience of learning a language from a non-native uh, so not much to share here <laughs> right as a learner i don't have a lot going on uh even though with all the like multilingualism that you mentioned mm -hmm. never had a non-native teacher what about you actually quite interesting case because i suppose and i think lots of people would agree with me that if you talk about uh, some uh countries where english is non-native uh we have almost every time non-natives like teachers for example whenever i studied english at school pretty obvious. Yeah. or at university like my teachers were Russian speakers. Yeah, that's why. Uh, and now, like, not now only, and like when I studied in China, when I was studying Chinese, it was kind of pretty interesting to have all native speakers around you who are gonna who are gonna teach you, and like you feel a bit shocked, nervous, surprised. But okay. I would say that does that happen? Like uh, the immersion experience, like it was a program you participated in. Uh, oh, what was that? Yeah, how you mean how I came to China to study? China. Yeah. Yeah. It was like yeah, it was some government scholarship. Yeah, um, that's why like we studied okay. at university, like with all of different uh, students abroad. So that's why it was kind of awesome. And you were immersed right from the get-go, and uh, you had all those native teachers in the classroom who spoke not a lot of English, I presume. Zero, I would say. <laughs> Awesome, that's the best. Okay, just throw them in the deep, right? <laughs> For me, that was all right. Like, I'm in power because okay. uh, my level was uh, like up intermediate. I don't know how people could. Oh, come You already had upper intermediate Chinese, which yeah. tells us a lot here methodologically, right? Which means, yeah, if you throw them in the deep, imagine you were a beginner. What would have I happened? Can't I can't imagine how it is with, with Chinese language because actually now I live in Turkey and I'm currently learning Turkish and I have kind of A1 level. I'm a beginner. I can say something, but still it can be like some problem. For example, whenever some delivery comes, I have problems. I like struggle to tell them something like uh, whatever. Left or right, uh, second yeah. flight of stairs. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. wait, okay, survival. Yeah, survival Turkish. Uh, mm -hmm. And you're in the country, which means, hey, full immersion. 
do you have any like former like official type of uh, like, how does your learning take place? Are you in a classroom? Actually, you know, not? like uh, our stream today is really useful <laughs> because uh, <laughs> I'll check some of my slides you know that. and oh my God, I'm just, I have a chance to hear how like teachers, like who are native speakers, but I'm shy. I don't know how students do that when they have like beginner level and they know absolutely nothing. I can't imagine. like you're afraid well, to say yeah. something it takes it takes a lot in case mm -hmm. you want to uh you know start from ground zero clearly there are no like true beginners in english these days like it takes uh, <laughs> a lot to find one. Uh, everybody have heard the ABC and everybody knows the one or three and you know, uh, it's does exposure. Uh, it's out there with Turkish, with Chinese that you're mentioning, right? Those mm -hmm. languages, uh, yeah, well, yeah, you might know like hi and thank you and <laughs> bye bye but cool. once that delivery guy's calling you, you don't know what to do and what to say. Mm -hmm. um, so well, are you taking classes? <laughs> I'm taking classes by myself again because I'm shy oh, to, to find it easy to try doing that. And I wanted to take some of your advice because, like, you have uh, like, uh, a <laughs> you don't yeah, you're a native emotional baggage. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and you know like what to how to support students. Like how like what should we I don't know be ready for when we come to the first lesson with native speakers. One of the very uh, popular branches these days, have you heard of neuro coaching? Um, mm -hmm. Training. <laughs> okay. Uh, which means that, well, in the perfect world, you uh, better not, uh, you know, hire a native speaker right from the get go, like as you are elementary. Well, uh, we're going to come back to that point because mm -hmm. anxiety is not your good friend in the classroom. It's pretty obvious. Every one of you, like beautiful teachers, know that that yeah, okay, zero anxiety in the classroom is a must. Like they cannot be scared, they cannot be anxious or worrying or panicking or I mean, God forbid, right? Uh, they come to your classroom to be in a safe space. Uh, if you by um, any chance are tutoring an elementary student, oh. Uh, even if you're not a speaker of their language, try to learn a couple of words in their language. You mm -hmm. create that initial contact there, right? That will uh, let the student kind of feel like, hey, that's a human I'm talking to here. <laughs> when our brains get scared, they get into survival mode, right? Everybody knows fight, flight, freeze. And uh, there is no learning there. Um, I taught elementaries <laughs> myself uh, in English. And oh, I... I took steps to, well, be like extra funny and outgoing and just trying to really, I don't know, extend my personality so much that they feel like, fine, there is no way out here. So we're sticking in this classroom with this weird lady, but at least it's funny. At least we're trying to, like, you always give so much positive feedback. And uh, it's more of, yeah, like an acting class, a game of charades, mm -hmm. uh, the first few classes. I feel like I'm rambling a lot right now. <laughs> Have you taught elementaries in how much foreign, uh, like versus uh, mm -hmm. first language input was going on? <laughs> Actually, yes, of course, sure, ele elementary and beginner students, yeah. And I had experience teaching Chinese children when we didn't have oh, wow. a common language. Okay. Yeah, that's why. Actually, no, in my opinion, that's uh, teaching beginners, like with native speakers, looks like teaching children because, like, you should play with them, you should always smile, show oh, yeah. them, <laughs> especially. Yeah. Okay. And there's like, it, it, it's super funny because, uh, well, there is a saying, sort of, I might watch it now, but the gist is that you treat them, yeah, as if they are. Uh, you know, younger children, not mm -hmm. clearly like transmitting that type of attitude, but yeah, get down to that level where uh, there's not much that you can discuss here with that grown up. For example, imagine your children a grown up, right? But all they can say is hello, hi, and I'm 24 years old. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they get so extra happy when they say that. Uh, well, 
if you're communicating outside of classroom, because text messaging is it, and you can translate your mm -hmm. messages and just try to get to them and explain to them uh, that, hey, no, I'm not treating you as a baby. <laughs> it's a classroom routine. Routines are key as well, right? If they know what to expect, you have to have a clear structure there. And uh, they know what, what's going on, right? They know the routine. We say our hellos, uh, teach your functional language. Hey, uh, open your books and whatever. This is a listening exercise. Like everybody take notes and something. Uh, well, how did that work for you? Actually, yeah, class. it seems to be quite useful in the tool, yeah, because you when you use your gesture, your body language, like that instructions, as you said, yeah, like functional language in class, it always works. But, but I don't know, for some people, it still could be a bit difficult. They will try to turn to their, like, to L1, yeah, and, like, try to say something, like, for yeah, right. non-natives, it could be a bit difficult to, like, not to be provoked, yeah. You don't have the L1 in case you're like, for me, that was like no way I could do it, like yeah. other than Google Translate. <laughs> That's why. Like, with you, it's good. Yeah. Like with me, like they, I don't know, students, like beginners, elementary Thank level you. students, they always try like, to push you. Let's say something in Russian. Let's like, explain it to me. Huh. I'm, I'm <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, that's <laughs> that's cute. Or they try to teach you something like my students would teach me stuff and like oh. I would come back with that later to them. They'll be like, oh, my gosh. OK, yeah, you learned it. I'm like, yeah, sure. Because that is establishing uh, like report. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's establishing that nice uh, teacher student relationship. Uh, it has to be you cannot just be yeah, a, a language teaching machine mm -hmm. uh, yeah. in with elementaries. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, have you ever had any problems like uh, with your like, beginner or elementary level students when they wanted to ask you something with their native language, but you couldn't understand? And what have what did you do in these cases? If you have this I always try to like, and then they back up, right? And then they're like, oh, never mind. Like, ah, oh, no, no, no. Uh, mm -hmm. It's normally not elementary because once they get out of their shells, they're already like a B1 or something, <laughs> right? When they actively try to initiate conversation, mm -hmm. uh, like for elementaries, they would actively like text, for example, in between classes and, hey, I actually wanted to ask, but I was shy in the classroom and then translator engines to the rescue um, with higher level students, they would be, ah, drop it. No, never mind it. No, 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 don't drop it. Please, let's try, like, break it down. Simple English for the win, right? <laughs> Whatever you're teaching, I also teach in German and, yeah, as you're mentioning it, Chinese. Uh, but, well, uh, which is English is like a very small fraction of what I actually teach before I used to. Uh -huh. uh, and now I'm more like into neuro coaching, but not the point the point is don't drop the point <laughs> all right oh uh, keep it going try to go down to simpler grammar adjust your grammar adjust your accent as much as you possibly can because uh, i have seen teachers not being critical or anything not like throwing people under the bus but i worked with american teachers who were like the heavily accented and their regional accent no. and they were not willing to like tune it down for their learners even a little bit which was quite upsetting like hey they're learning English mm -hmm. I'm speaking English or if you're like Scottish or anything that's <laughs> um that's quite hard to understand please speak standard English <laughs> please <laughs> right by the way you know like there is a kind of a stereotype about native uh, speakers that if they teach you, they will only speak like because it's gonna be listening practice and speaking practice. And that's all. Is it really true? Like, is it what's happening in the lessons? Uh, a myth you're saying, or uh, a myth, every myth has come from somewhere. It has come a long way, right? So, yeah, man. <laughs> well, <laughs> people do come. Like, we were laughing with you just uh, a few minutes ago, like, yeah, the big coffee mug and, you know, uh -huh. <laughs> hungover teacher who just wants to talk. But sure, there are cases, but sometimes people do come and subscribe for a conversation practice. So they get conversation practice, mm -hmm. right? It's not like bad or anything. It's not a moral sin to come to the classroom to give conversation practice. Some people are actively seeking it. 
um oh it's like people who are seeking therapy sessions <laughs> but also like if the teacher has not been trained in uh well esl techniques mm -hmm. it yeah they might be a native like would you go ahead and teach your native language to foreigners what oh my god like? i don't know what, <laughs> what, what could i i could only speak to them that's all <laughs> yeah right but like once you get a bit of like theory in and once you like think back of the rules uh behind your like sentence structures you might go ahead and teach it right mm -hmm. you'll be a, a, an amazing teacher because you're a native speaker <laughs> right yeah. actually, actually how hard is it to learn like to teach russian uh like from a point of view because i'm taking classes oh and, mm -hmm. like it's cool to learn it it's fun but like how to teach it <laughs> from a point of view of a native i always wanted to ask yeah actually that is the point like uh, i'm thinking that if somebody asked me to like to teach them russian i couldn't i don't know like okay if they like uh intermediate up intermediate level that's fun like because we can talk again yeah like we can just discuss okay. some moments but if it is a real beginner okay how can i describe grammar how can i help i don't know the ca different cases etc it's impossible it looks impossible for me well, there's a lot of cramming in there. There's a lot of like endings, a lot of like ski squid and stuff like that. And uh, that's insane. Yeah. If people know some techniques, how to do that, that's cool. Yeah, like as you said, like the different uh, courses or like programs for uh, like teaching English as a foreign language. That's cool. Like if we have something with our native language, that it's okay. Just to uh, well, it depends on, yeah, of course, it depends on like the amount of. Uh, well, time they personally invested uh, like that particular mm -hmm. teacher invested into it it has once been a trend like go teach abroad get your like uh whatever experience of another culture go teach mm -hmm. in Arab Emirates go teach in China like you were saying uh it was a trend among Americans because uh well I mean I'm like German by birth but I was like through the school system in America so kind of mm -hmm. do can speak from like the American mentality. Uh, it was a thing. Um, <laughs> and people just like, I don't know, I don't want to give labels here. But sometimes people just didn't know what to do with their life in a way and they went teaching in a foreign land <laughs> to figure out uh, the like journey. And uh, that gave a huge boost to those myths. It might be that, mm -hmm. right? Uh, again, yeah, like backtracking a little bit. <laughs> uh, with lower level students, you want to check understanding a lot. Would you agree? Because they be like, yeah, <laughs> especially like Asian students, they're like, <laughs> and then, so what is a divorce? Uh, is it like married or not? And they're like, <laughs> <laughs> no, the answer is no people. Yeah, you can you also should not ask yes no questions because they will also always say yes, yeah, the answer right. should be no. Eliciting, right? Yeah. Eliciting techniques are key. <laughs> um yeah, well. Um Actually, no. uh -huh. I, I just like want to say again, like touring back to like when people choose native speakers, like they should also remember about their own goals. What for what for they need this like native speaker, yeah? Like to the just analysis has to be definitely. Yeah. yeah, just right. speak in practice or as a real teacher, because these points are, they are absolutely different. Uh, yeah. Think exam prep or something along these lines. Think some like super exotic goal, uh, some mm -hmm. very specific skill. Uh, yeah, definitely a native uh, teacher might be uh, super helpful in case they have worked in the same field as you're like intending to get employment at for example right like mm -hmm. a lot of people like i do coach a couple of people who uh are seeking you know a degree in brain science for example like from other uh -huh. countries because hey that's what i do <laughs> so i do have that experience i don't really think i can teach people how to uh be a like a medical professional and like speak english right because mm -hmm. uh, i'm not a medical professional i know my words because hey i'm a human uh but the uh yeah the area is not exactly, exactly. <laughs> what you do so that's a good idea mm -hmm. all right um, well <laughs> anything yeah. we haven't touched upon like with we did speak about uh 
like skills roughly because all skills mm -hmm. have to be it's not only conversation right uh, and the needs analysis has to be so native teacher does not mean that it's just fiber <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's you just come to forever. talk. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, best choice is always immersion programs because there is no other way you're going to speak, right? Or like, uh, this is another good way to create that fake environment kind of thing where you sort of immerse yourself mm -hmm. into stuff, right? Uh, have you tried that with Turkish? Oh my God, it's difficult. <laughs> Switching your full settings to Turkish, hey? <laughs> I'm trying to, but yeah, again, like I can like feel a student, what students feel when they just like don't know what to say at all and they super shy, etc. That's why like that point which you mentioned like about the psycholog psychological atmosphere, how it is, it's also important, right. yeah. So that's why in this case, like the work of native speaker as a teacher is even harder. Yes. Uh, it is. Oh, well, I mean, uh, the amount of calories <laughs> your body loses during this those school, classes. This <laughs> very, very expensive classes. I mean, not money wise, but like for your brain, because yeah, yeah. <laughs> the glucose, oh my goodness. Yeah, that's uh, after those classes, I feel uh, fully uh, empowered to eat those donuts. Because, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of energy. It's a lot of body language, like you mentioned. So, yeah, we basically made a full circle here. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, like when you can see the results, like you, you can understand, yeah, that it was worth it. Beautiful, beautiful, right? It was worth it. So, um, yeah, um, haven't I guess we made a full circle, right? <laughs> we kind of yeah. came back to square one to where we started. Uh, seek out your professional, uh, you know, by uh, the strictly professional criteria, <laughs> right? Uh, if they're a native speaker at that, that's amazing. By the way, who's a native speaker? It's a very, uh, you know, kind of a interesting aspect. Like, who do we call a native speaker? Like, who do we call a native speaker? <laughs> oh, a good question. Like, if you ask me, <laughs> it's a person like who can use language, like who lived in the country for a long time, who knows the culture also, because it comes from the culture. Oh, culture yeah. Yeah. Sure, sure. Sure. Uh, with the culture code, uh, that person is basically the ambassador to the culture. So you're like, yeah, you're killing the proverbial birds with one stone there. Uh, the teacher you uh, have in your homeland with, like, who has never been outside of it, for example, in an English speaking country, if that's English we're talking about, they might, yeah, not know certain collocations or like habitual collocations or certain aspects. Uh, but that doesn't mean they're a bad teacher or if they're like heavily accented. Uh, suit your needs. Yeah. If you're in elementary, I mean, that works. And native teachers might work even better. Uh, I mean, native uh, the, that you share your first language with. Mm -hmm. uh, in case uh, you're finding like it hard to connect, one mm -hmm. thing. Another thing, know the potential pitfalls in the speakers of your language, right? and uh, like false friends and all that stuff. Um, they know the typical mistakes the learners are making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They sure. warn you beforehand. So there are a lot, a lot of perks of, uh, you know, hiring, for example, a Spanish person, if you're a Spanish national, as your teacher of English, because they know better. <laughs> yeah, it's also like that works. Yeah, just like, you also need to know like what to pay attention to yeah, in, like, with beginners or elementary students whatever so that's why yeah you should always think if you think yeah like if uh, you want to have a native speaker teacher or no think what for and what what bonuses yeah. you'd like to take here yeah. so that's why it's quite yeah. important okay calculate the choice there oh uh, well we good we good thanks for a cool summary yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. so i hope you. i hope that the stream was useful and interesting for our listeners yeah beautiful viewers Tell us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you. how your experience with the native teachers went, whether you've had one or not, whether you were a learner or you taught your mother tongue, uh, how did that go? Because we were here with Kathy to just compare experience as learners and as teachers, because we both have some like stuff sort of <laughs> uh, 
uh, that we have experienced uh, in that journey on planet Earth uh, in language teaching. So thanks a lot for watching. Uh, good luck with Turkish. Oh, That's thank you so one. much. See Hello, you. everyone. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.